Welcome back. Mobile communications provider Vodacom Tanzania has agreed to terms for the release of its chief executive officer and four other employees following the arrest last week. The company says it also has agreed to pay 5.28 billion shillings to the government. Last week, Tanzania authorities charged the managing director of Vodacom Tanzania and other telecom executives with economic crimes. Well, it's countdown to the sound of the Kosen Gong at the Nigerian Stock Exchange. And let's talk to Temple Ashadu, who's live from the trading floor of the Stock Exchange for more updates. Good afternoon, Temple. So earlier on, we saw the numbers pointing southwards. Has anything changed? We'll get back to Temple in just a moment. Well, with trade turmoil and growing restrictions on carbon emission making for an unrestrained future, some of the world's biggest automakers are pivoting to a new market, which is Africa. The continent has been referred to as a long dumping ground for the world's used cars, and auto companies like Volkswagen, BMW, Toyota, and Nissan are waking up to a market with potential annual new vehicle sales of up to 4 million. But getting it right won't be easy. At the edge of Nairobi's Gong Forest, thousands of used cars litter in the hot sun on a dusty field waiting for buyers. Imported from Japan or the Middle East, they offer an affordable route to vehicle ownership in Kenya and have dominated the market for decades. That is an obstacle big car makers must overcome if they hope to crack the huge African market. The undeserved continent where buyers are still hungry for conventional engines offers the promise of rapid growth amid global trade turmoil and increasingly strict carbon emission controls in traditional markets. Volkswagen, BMW, Toyota, Nissan and others have joined forces to lobby governments for steps that would reduce the imports that have made sub-Saharan Africa notoriously difficult to rain and allow local production to flourish. We started um, scanning the markets and we, we looked into ways of, of opening them up because they're, they're literally not functioning right now due to importation of used vehicles all the way from Japan or the US. It's a dumping ground for used cars. Schaeffer also added that there is a potential market in sub-Saharan Africa for three to four million new cars, up from just 420,000 in 2017. The AAAM identified Kenya, Nigeria and Ghana as potential manufacturing hubs and helped draft legislation setting up standards and incentives. In Kenya, the government plans to wind down imports of cars more than three years old by 2021. Exceptions will be made for passenger vehicles with 1.5 litre or smaller engines. We don't have the capacity, we don't have the manpower or the capital, finance capital to make this business a uh, manufacturing uh, progress uh, in the motor sector. Used cars are also among the leading imports in many African countries and governments will have to wean themselves off the associated tax revenues. However, there are other stumbling blocks. Access to financing is limited and countries that don't host assembly plants must also be persuaded to limit used imports and reduce tariffs on African-made vehicles. That will be hard to do if the only outcome they see is higher sticker prices. Temple Ashadu is back with us for live updates coming from the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Well, Temple, tell us what are the numbers looking like at this time? Any hope for a positive closing today? Sure, uh, things are looking good. Uh, we should actually look close northwards today because the market is uh, currently up some 0.09%, helped by uh, the banking names, the consumer goods segment of the market, which some in, uh, investors weren't even eye in before now, but now they have the uh, interest of uh, some investors 
And of course, traders here in the floor of the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Uh, Dangode flour is currently up by more than 3%. Dangode sugar is also up currently in the market. And these two key names are really helping the consumer goods segment of the market uh, to look good. So the consumer good is up some 0.40%. Uh, that's about now. The oil and gas segment is also not left out because that has also increased by some 0.13%. Uh, we saw some more gains uh, being realized by Etana PLC, and that is translating to some uh, positive push up for the uh, oil and gas uh, segment of the market. The insurance segment of the market is about the one that is uh, currently flat. Uh, industrial goods segment is also a little bit flat, just um, with a bias of some 0.01%. Uh, percent as things are in the market. Uh, so if you look across the counter, we have uh, quite a bit of buy sentiment, but the uh, what, what you call the, the, the activity level is a little bit weak, I mean, compared to what we've seen as of yesterday, because in terms of volume of transaction done so far, it's still less than 200 million units, and of course, uh, less than 2 billion naira, because on the average, uh, this market regularly records uh, about 3 billion naira in terms of value of transactions. But we're still uh, less than an hour uh, away from the close of the, of the, of the business day, and so uh, hopefully all of that will change. But I think the market is still going to close in the green because uh, the bearish uh, sentiments we've seen in the market uh, kind of wind as of midweek through to Thursday, and we're expecting that to also extend till, this, till today, uh, Friday, uh, while the low confidence level will also uh, reduce and then be replaced by some kind of uh, improvement in confidence. Uh, so at the end of the day, uh, this week is most likely going to look positive uh, eventually. But if anything changes from the current level of activities that we have in the market right now, possibly negative, uh, if it goes negative rather, then that is when the week to day performance of the market may turn uh, really uh, bearish, but we have a lot of investors here are really bullish. Uh, looking at the low prices that we've seen, uh, that gives room for a lot of investors to come in. There's no catalyst in the system, there's no news to drive up performance, except for one that came in a few minutes ago, uh, the kind of a synergy between GlaxoSmithKline and of course Fixing PLC, uh, continuation of the uh, structure, uh, uh, supply chain restructuring of uh, of, uh, of GlaxoSmithKline. They're looking to partner with Fitzin here locally for some manufacturing of some of the products here, uh, some respiratory related products and all of that. But that is expected to only take effect from Q3 of 2021. So until two years time before we will see that. And of course, you know, uh, anything can change even in the plan before uh, this particular date this week. Okay, Temple, I'll have to let you go at this point. Well, thank you for those updates. And that's our show today. Thank you for watching. I am BC at Debayo.